or CF lib. So, Jonas, the stage is yours. Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Marcus. So, I will be talking about using swarms with the CF lib, the CrazyFly Python lib. And I will go through Firstly, a bit of introduction what the CF lib is and how we use it and how other people use it in some way. And then we will look at what the library offers in terms of uh, swarming capability and management. Then we will attempt to write or show a small swarm controlling program uh, that would control Seven, uh, seven crazy flies with the CF lib. And if we're lucky, we will have a demo as well. And then we will talk about some conclusions and some future for the library. Okay, and as Marcus said, any questions, please direct them to the chat or come find me later on in one of those cool Mibi, Mibo rooms, right? Okay, so we have this, this library, a Python library that attempts to provide a mapping of the functionality of the crazy fly to your PC, right? Um, it's a library that's maintained by Bitcrace. Uh, it's open source, you can find it on GitHub. And really it needs your input because we are seven people here in the best part of Sweden. Uh, and we do a lot of stuff. Uh, we do a bunch of hardware. We do, we pack all your orders. We invent new crazy decks. Uh, but in terms of software, the, our main use point for this library is our client. And the client might not be representative of what you want to do with the library. So please uh, be in touch, show us what you're doing with the library and help us make it better, okay? But the library it uses uh, the crazy radio, or you can use USB or other crazy stuff to communicate with the crazy fly firmware. And it uses the crazy real time protocol. If you search our website, you can find some excellent documentation written by Anor about this, pro about this protocol. Um, and it's written in Python and it's, it's asynchronous by default. Uh, if you want a more in depth, talk about what this means, you can go back and look at the recording uh, from Anor's talk about uh, the app layer versus the library. Uh, but it, it's also, but it, in short, it's a consequence of us using the library to write uh, uh, our client, our CF client. Uh, I will get into a bit more detail later. If you're looking at, we will provide these slides later. And if you look at them, you can follow the links uh, down to a guide for using this uh, Python library. You can find our generated API reference and you can find the code at GitHub. Okay, fine. So at the heart of this CF lib is the CrazyFly module that attempts to provide this mapping of functionality between the library and your PC and the code that is running inside of the crazy fly. So we provide mappings so for like reading logging variables from the from the crazy fly or from setting parameters or uh, using the commander uh, frameworks to set uh, set points where you want your crazy fly to fly. And as I said since the CF libis is asynchronous by default, uh, using this CrazyFly uh, module and CrazyFly class can be a bit of a hassle if you just want to make some quick little script because everything happens in threads in the background. So you need to set up, so if you see here, if you see the first little box here, you create your CrazyFly object in Python. And then you need to set a bunch of callbacks, functions that will be called at the different uh, events in the future. You say when 
when we are connected to the crazy fly, run this code. And when we disconnect from the classic crazy fly, you run this code. So this is a, a contrived example of setting up uh, listening for logging variables. Then you need to you need to set a callback for connection, and in that callback you need to set uh, set up your logging uh, information, what to, logging variables you want to listen to, and then you want to set the callback again to say when I receive data, run this code. So. Using using the crazy lib in this mode, this asynchronous mode, uh, puts a lot of uh, what you say. You need to be careful about uh, how you structure your program and how you take care of the state of your program. And um, in order to help out, we also provide something we call the sync crazy fly class. And this is for when you more you want to run you want to write a a quick script or uh, test out some functionality and you don't want to deal with the asynchronicity. You want to you want to be able to quickly get a grasp of things and see the, the structure of your program and the flow of your program, right? So it, it handles the asynchronous nature of so all these callbacks you see. It does it behind the scenes and turns it into blocking functions. So you can see a synchronous uh, flow of your program. It, in the background, it uses this uh, Python event object. You can look it up if you're interested. But it turns the, this uh, tangled example into something more structured like this. And this uses the, the Python mechanism of uh, context managers, this with keyword. So you can say, I want to have a sync crazy fly connected to this radio or USB URI uh, using a crazy fly object. And then you get this sync, synchronized crazy fly object. And then in the same way, you can use the sync logger class that turns asynchronous logging operations into asynchronous flow. And then when you're in this scope here of the sync logger, um, you know that you're going to receive data from the from the log configuration you set up, right? So it's a way of helping out, taking the default asynchronous nature of the CF lib, helping you turn it into a synchronized flow. Okay, so knowing all that, that bit of background information, we're now going to look at what the crazy fly provides in the way of dealing with swarms. And we don't we don't have uh, that much fancy stuff. So we want to make it easy for you to get up and running with controlling multiple crazy flies. And we want to make it easy to run commands on many crazy flies or, or co communicate with them. So what we provide is a way of mapping functionality or mapping actions to many crazy flies. That's pretty much the basis right now of the swarming capabilities of the crazy fly lib. And I'm going to get into detail what that means. So we provide a swarm class. Yes, I have a short uh, interlude or short uh, break here. Um, one surprising or maybe not at all surprising aspect of, of uh, organizing these BAM days is that we at Bitcraze started using our own stuff. We started to write applications using the CFLib or using the app layers of preparing for talks. And this made us uh, realize or, or made us aware of <laughs> exactly how to use our stuff or how, what was painful, what had paper cuts and what had not. It made me think about this concept of dog fooding. Some of you may be aware of this, some may not. It, it's arise from well, the mythology is that this is from a 1970s commercial for dog food, where the, where the leading actor of the commercial uh, showed that he, he, he fed his own dog with the food he was making commercial for, right? And then this was picked up at Microsoft as a concept that when, for instance, when they developed the Windows NT, 
uh, they introduced the concept of dog fooding, where all developers needed to run the, the nightly builds of Windows NT. And the point here was, if you feel the pain of, of, your, of your development code, you're more, you're more uh, incentivized to fix it because you're all, you're, you're suffer from your, you suffer from the lack of stability, right? And this is what we experienced here when we try to write programs with our own libraries. So full disclosure, the code I will show you right now will probably not work on the current firmware and the current library, but in the next release, it will work, okay? And this is something we'll have to carry with us that we need, and we need you to provide input when things are not working and we need to get better on using our own stuff and provide and do a bit more of dog fooding. So with that out of the way, I'm going to provide you with an example. So we're going to try to write some Python. I think I ended up around 70, 75 lines and it will fly a swarm, a small swarm of crazy flies in a sinus wave formation. And this example will use the bulk, the majority of the CFLib swarm methods, okay? So what we're seeing to the left here is the main method pretty much in Python and I will show you the excursions it takes. So when you first if you instantiate a swarm object here using the fancy Python context managers again, uh, it will run a constructor or an init method in Python and you need to provide it uh, at least with uh, an array of URIs telling you, telling the swarm uh, how to reach your crazy flies pretty much. You can see here that I'm using two different dongles. If you look at down here with the array of URIs, and this is to also if you, to make sure we don't get a bunch of radio communication errors, so safety measurement pretty much. We usually say, or Ano usually tells me, I guess, that you should have around three crazy flies per radio, give or take. And you provide this array of URIs to your swarm object. And then you can see when you use this magic uh, context managers in Python, it runs the enter method of the, meth of the class as well. So in the enter method, the swarm class will open a link to all your crazy flies. So that means when you are in the scope of a swarm context manager here, here denoted as swarm, you will have a connection to all the crazy flies that you have specified in your URI array. Okay. So knowing that when we have done with this red box mark line of code, we have a connection to all our crazy flies. And then what we also provide in this lib is a method called parallel. And it's also, we have this parallel safe method. And it's pretty much, I will take the method you provide and I will run it uh, on all of your crazy flies, pretty much. So the method will have uh, one of these sync crazy fly flies as an argument. If you see down here, if you say, we say here, parallel safe, activate high level commander. And then we see the high level commander method down here takes a sync crazy fly object as an argument. And it runs this set uh, parameter commander high level, enable high level commander, right? So this will actually be run for all the crazy flies you specified in your URIs. And the safe part of the parallel here means that if any of any of the threads that communicates with your crazy fly has an exception, this method will also throw an exception. We have a unsafe or a parallel method that ignores uh, the individual exceptions as well. It's a, a flavor you can choose. Uh, we can see here also that we run a method on the swarm class called reset estimators. This will actually run parallel safe uh, in the background, uh, resetting the Kalman estimator and waiting for position. So after you pass the line of reset estimators, all the crazy flies in your swarm will have an idea of where they are, hopefully. 
And then we also have a method to get the estimated position of all your crazy facts in the swarm. And in this example, I use that to sort my URIs actually to make sure I have them uh, considered as a as a line in the Y space. We can see why that's important later on. And if we go to the next slide, see we also have this helper method on the swarm class called sequential. And this is uh, the cousin of the parallel method. It will run your code on all the crazy flies, but it will do it one after the other. Instead of doing it all at once in parallel, you will say I will run it on the first one, then the second one, then the third one, and the fourth one, and so on in the order of the URI-ish. Uh, and here we can take a minute to talk about arguments. So we can see here, we can see for the first, for example, we call sequential with the takeoff method as an argument, which means uh, we will run takeoff on all Okay, yeah. Thank you, Christopher. It's become to my attention that my face is blocking information for you. So let me fix that in some way. Like that. So the takeoff method down here will be run for all your crazy facts in the swarm sequentially. And then we can see this blob comment I have here. We have a way of also sending parameters, additional parameters to these functions. Here we say for the sequential one, we say take this takeoff method and run it for each crazy fly. And we can imagine also wanting to have arguments to these functions. And we have a way of doing this. We can look at this method here. Uh, if we run Later on, we run parallel safe. Say, run this function wave for all crazy flies in the swarm and provide this args argument here to all of them. And we'll see how that works. We have there, there's this named or named parameter in the Python class then for parallel safe and for sequential called args dict. And this means if you provide a Python dictionary where the key is the URI of your crazy fly and the value is an array. Then this array will become the will become the argument for the method run against that crazy fly. So for instance, if you have a key that is the URI to a certain crazy fly and the value is an array then the first element of that array will be the first parameter of the method call for that crazy fly. Okay. So what I'm doing here is that I'm taking all the positions of the crazy flies that I got earlier in get estimated positions. And I use this Python magic here, dict comprehension, if you want to Google it, I usually do, to turn this uh, the, the position, what I return, what I get from this get the estimate position to a format that's suitable for the arcs dict down below. So I want the key to be URIs and I want the value to be an array. And here I will get, when I'm done with all this massaging of data, I will get arguments to each of these wave methods that is the position of the crazy fly, right? So what happens in this function and this code is we're, we're doing some while loop based on some fancy math. And for each iteration of the loop, we call this wave method with the position of the crazy fly. And we say in this method, okay, here you will go to this position. You will keep your position in X and Y and you will, we will modulate the height a bit. And again, the height if you look at the method here, get height, it's called here. We pretty much look up, we look up the position based on, I, I want to know, 
here, okay. So we have this URI of all our crazy supplies, and I want to know which one am I dealing with. So I, I check the position in our URI list to see which position in the swarm I'm dealing with. And then based on that, I calculate where in this sinus wave this should be in this current phase. Okay. And given all that, let's see if we can actually make this fly. Pray for me, everybody. So let's see, I'm going to try to turn on my camera again. I would probably need to stop sharing my screen, right? And you will get a nice view of our lab, right? Awesome. And now I run this Python script. We'll wait a, a bit. We're trying to get the estimated position and all of that. Yeah, <laughs> great success. Let's see here if I can get back. Yes, and so conclusions. Right now, our swarm support in the CF lib is meant to get you started with a swarm quickly. Uh, getting it's, it's pretty easy to set up. You just need a list of URIs. You can start writing pretty basic stuff or pretty cool stuff, stuff quickly. It's not really today meant for serious research or commercial use. We have known limitations, like we, everything is written, written in Python. We have then the issue of the Python threading model, uh, which uses a global interpreter lock. So we will never get true concurrency would limit the uh, latency we, um, targets we can reach and stuff like that. Uh, and we currently do not have any broadcast support. Um, so, and this is the question for us, what, what should be in the CFLib uh, regarding swarms? Um, you can do some pretty cool stuff with the state of it today. And we could add more helper functions. We could add, like uh, Wolfgang was talking about earlier, we could add different management stuff for checking health of crazy flies or rebooting or resetting or different helper functions like this. But it's also, it's not, it's not clear to us. So we, we need help from the community here as well. Uh, what, would lo what are you using the CFLib today to do? And what would you like to be able to do in the CFLib? or what's keeping you from using the CFLib, stuff like this. It would be very inter interesting for us to hear. Uh, and we will talk a bit more about this later on, I guess, in the panel discussion also with uh, Wolfgang Hönig. But other than that, uh, thank you very much. And are there any questions? Thank you, Jonas. And thanks for the very nice demo. Um, so we have some questions in the chat. Uh, Wolfgang and Martin are wondering which uh, positioning system was used for the demo. Mm -hmm. And this is using uh, the Lighthouse positioning system. So it's pretty much I've I've packed them as tight as I could and prayed that I'm still inside the four meter accepted. And it seemed to work, right? Yeah, very nicely. Uh, there is another question from Randolph. Um, what is your experience or, or opinion on the Python's I think IO? programming model. Yeah, so this is this the color of your function discussion thingy. Um, well, I'm, I'm, 
I have opinions, but I'm pretty pragmatic. Uh, this, is, this is a very good question. And I like to think, I've talked to the, uh, about this with Arno as well. I'm, I'm like, I'm the most recent employee at Bitgrace. So and what I'm learning a lot as well, but I think if we were to rewrite the CF lib today, it will probably be more based on what you're saying, the async IO or the async model with a more intuitive way or a more integrated way of having you to sh having you, you, the user choosing when to use synchronous and asynchronous modes, right? Uh, and I think, yeah, I'm going to say that it, it, it's fine. It's fine. The, the, the Python programming model is fine. It, it's more about the CF lib has been developed as we're learning. And it would probably look a lot different if we had to, re, if we were, we were going to redo it today. But I don't think it's the Python language or the Python constructs that in any way is holding anything back. Does that answer your question or do I just babble on? I'm not sure. Thanks. Uh, Alno has a question. Is there any plan to rewrite the lib? We have three minutes left <laughs> before the break. Well, no, there's no plan. There, there's talk, there's ideas, there's evil laughter, but there's no plan. Yep. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Jonas. Uh, so, um, after this, uh, I was a bit early before with a coffee break. After this, there is a coffee break uh, where you can get a chance to talk to Jonas and to Wolfgang um, in the Mibu Room town, town Hall. So you can reach this by rooms, networking, town hall, meet the speakers. Uh, after the coffee break at 12 o'clock, there is going to be a panel discussion about swarm management where both Jonas and Wolfgang is going to join to discuss uh, both of the different um, uh, libraries and ways of flying swarms. I think this is going to be a really interesting discussion. So if you're into this, you should definitely join us. Yeah, thank you, okay. Marcus. Thanks a lot.